<laughs> in Matthew, leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Now, I, I want you to know exactly kind of like where we're at. So I got a map. And on the map is Genesaret, and I'm going to come back here and kind of show you. So this is where they were. They were here. And if you notice, Tyre and Sidon are kind of way up there along the coast. A good 70, 80 mile walk away from where they were. They were in a region that worshipped false gods. As a matter of fact, the, re the god in this area was specifically the god Astarte. It's only going to be important if you're ever on Jeopardy, but then they ask the right question. But that's the god that they served for the most part until the Romans came in and the Romans said, you will worship now our gods. And some of the people did because they liked to be friendly with the Romans as much as possible. Many of the people stayed with, with their God. They withdrew to this region because Jesus knew that his time was drawing short. And he knew that he needed to spend some time with his disciples, with his apostles, with these people that were going to be charged with bringing forth the word with laying a foundation for the church after his death. And everywhere that Jesus went, thousands and thousands of people showed up. Every time he went someplace, word got out, Jesus of Nazareth is coming, and people would begin to flock to him. And as they flocked to him, the Pharisees would begin to flock as well. And so you had a group of people that were only there because they wanted to see him do a miracle. You had a group of people that were there because they needed physical healing. And you had a group of people there that were only there to challenge him because they hated him. And you had a group of people that wanted to hear every word he had to say. So he withdrew to a region to get away, to be alone. So that it would just be him and a small group of his apostles so that he could begin to instill in them the task that was ahead. This is a Canaanite woman. Preach it. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. So now a couple of things about this woman. She came and she begins to yell at him, have mercy on me. And the thing about mercy is mercy is something that is undeserved. You know, so often we find ourselves in that place where we think, don't you know who I am? You know, it's kind of where Job was. Job said, God, don't you know who I am? How dare you allow these horrible things to happen to me? I'm Job. I'm important. I'm somebody of value. How dare you let this happen to me? But this Canaanite woman comes before Jesus and she begins to shout, Have mercy on me. See, mercy is something by its very definition that is undeserved. That's why I love when people tell me things like, well, you know what, that's not fair. And I say, you know what, you're right. And I love that things are not fair. Because if things were fair, and God gave me what was fair, I would have had eternal punishment and separation from Him. Because that's what is fair. That is what I deserved after rebelling against Him. Whether I did it knowing who He was, 
or rather I did it out of ignorance. And ever since the fall, man has been separated from God with no way on their own of getting back to Him. And the only way we have a chance to connect with Him is by His mercy. See, that's the thing about mercy. Mercy says, I need something I don't deserve. Which was one of the things that makes mercy in our lives so hard. Because how often has somebody done you wrong and the last thing you wanted to do was give them mercy? How often have you been done wrong and you thought, you know what? Your day's coming. And I'm going to be there when it happens because I'm participating. You see, mercy is when we give people things they don't deserve. And you know, maybe that person deserves something completely different. But you know, so do I. So do we. God gave us something we didn't deserve. And here's this woman saying, that's what I want. I want something I don't deserve. And she does it based not upon her goodness, but upon His. She comes and throws herself at His feet. Not trying to convince Him of her worth, but basing everything upon who she has heard that he is. And that's the beautiful thing about this passage, is this woman who has come was raised in false religions. She was raised serving the god Astarte and probably serving some of the Roman gods and her daughter was demon possessed and she no doubt went to her gods. Went to all the gods that she had grown up with, brought her daughter before them and time after time after time realized that her gods were inept. That her gods had no power to make a difference. But being within a hundred miles of Nazareth, she has heard stories from travelers about a man named Jesus. She's heard stories about a man who casts out demons, a man who heals the blind and who heals the sick, probably even a man who has raised people from the dead. She has heard about this man. I don't know if she's heard the things that he's taught and the things that she's claimed. Who knows how deep the rumors have gone. But now he is there and tired. And so she comes before him and says, Lord. Saying to him, I'm ready now to walk away from all of my gods, from everything I've known. And I'm ready to call you Lord. I'm ready to trust in you in ways that I could never trust the false gods. She's ready to walk away from everything for something that is real. You can imagine that powerful and moment. She comes before the Savior. She says, Lord, have mercy on me. Son of David, or Son of Man, she calls him. Basically saying, I understand. You know, she calls him Son of David. I understand that you are the Messiah. And in this touching moment, no doubt, because God has laid on her heart to go find Jesus. 
Jesus does not answer her a word. Bam! Talk about a slam door right in her face. She's calling out. She comes. She kneels before him. She's on her face. It says she's prostrate before him in a way of worship. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. I've come before you because I need something that only you can offer. I need what you have to offer because only you can meet my need. And he sits there silent. If you can imagine the confusion that must be going through her mind, thinking I've heard stories about this guy in the moment I heard he was here, there is a moving in my spirit. In my soul, my spirit began to, to it stirred within me and said, Go and see Jesus. Find Jesus. And she goes and she seeks Him out and she finds Him and He remains silent. And if that's not enough of a slap in the face, if that's not enough of an insult, His disciples came to Him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying after us. <coughs> she didn't just say it once. She continued and she kept following them and they went into a house and she refused to leave them in peace. She said, I have a need. I have a need that is incredibly great. I know that I was told by the, by, by the Spirit to come here. I'm here and I will not be denied. And if it wasn't enough of a slap in the face that Jesus was silent, now the disciples are saying, Lord, send her away. She just won't stop. She doesn't get the idea that we don't want her here. She doesn't get the idea that she's not important enough. And it could have been that Jesus was just kind of silent waiting to see what his disciples would do. I don't think so. I think Jesus closed the door on her on purpose. I think he knew exactly how his disciples would respond and that they would close the second door. Because you see, sometimes... God will lay on our hearts that He wants us to do something. Sometimes it's a ministry that God has for us. Sometimes it's a, it's a decision in life that God has for us. God has these things that He wants us to do. He lays them on our hearts. He says, this is what I want you to do. And we begin to walk in that direction and BAM! The door gets closed. And so often the first thing we do is we begin to think, wow! Maybe I didn't hear from God. Maybe that movie in my stomach was too many fries. <laughs> and we begin to doubt what we heard when we were quiet with God because the door was closed. Sometimes people come up to that closed door and they get so discouraged by that closed door they walk away from what God has told them to do. Like, wow. I don't know, maybe it wasn't from God. Maybe it was something else, or I don't know. But that door that door looks closed to me. Or maybe. God wants to know how badly we want it. Maybe God's waiting to see that you want what's behind door number one bad enough that you will keep pursuing it. Second door is closed. And he finally speaks. Jesus finally answers. And he says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. You are a Gentile. I was not sent to you. You are not part of my ministry. 
you are not the purpose of my ministry. As a matter of fact, I came here because nobody here is part of the purpose of my ministry except my disciples, and so you are now dismissed. Another door slammed in her face. We're talking about a mother whose daughter is demon-possessed. And it even adds the phrase suffering terribly. Some translations say cruelly. Because it was bad. She had done everything she could. like where Peter was in John 6 where people begin to depart from Jesus and, and Jesus looks at the rest and says are you going too? And Peter says to whom shall we go? Do you alone have the words of eternal life? She knew only in Jesus could she have what she needed Jesus says, I only came for the lost sheep of Israel. I'm going to just keep slamming doors in your face. I'm going to keep closing them. And I mean, we live in a society that by now, most people are like, fine. That's the way God is. I don't need Him. I don't want Him. I'm not sure what kind of God that is, but that's not the God for me. I'm going to walk away. Doesn't matter how big their needs are, doesn't matter how big their hurts are, they get a little bit of offended, they get a little bit of a closed door, and they are gone. Not this woman. This woman came and knelt before him, Lord help me, she said, refusing to be denied, refusing to allow the closed doors to prevent her from getting what she wants. And the Lord replies, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Whoa. Not only is he closing doors, now he's insulting her. He calls her a dog. Which is often the way Jews treated Gentiles. It's the way they would speak to them. I mean, we think we lived in a racially charged society. Imagine... If someone came to Jesus, and Jesus dissed them racially, how people would respond, but that is what he does to Closed door, after closed door, after closed door, and now not only is the door closed, but it is, in, it is closed with racial insults. She responds, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Yeah, maybe I'm a dog, but even dogs eat the crumbs. And no doubt she had heard the rumors about all the people that have rejected Jesus. Said, Your people are rejecting me. Can't there be something for those that still pursue you? I love what Jesus says. Then Jesus answered, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So sometimes, God is closing the door He wants us to walk through. Sometimes God wants to see that we are like this woman, that we desire something so greatly that we will not be deterred from what God has, the errand that God has sent us on. 
And I hear from people all the time, oh, the Lord is giving me a vision of the ministry that He wants me to do. And, and they get excited and they begin to take a couple steps forward and the door gets closed and they're like, ah, oh, okay, I guess it wasn't for me. No. God wants you to walk up and just, ah, kick that door down. He wants to know that you want it as badly as He wants it for you. Not every closed door is because God is moving you to a different direction. Sometimes He wants to know how badly you want the things that He wants for you. Because when we have to work hard for something, it becomes so much more valuable to us once we possess it. You know, when someone just walks up and gives you something, you don't value it the way that you would if you worked for it. If you don't believe me, have kids. Because <laughs> parents work and they work and they work and they sacrifice and they give stuff to the kids and two days later it's broken. Do you know how much that costs me to get it? But yet when the kids work for it, it becomes different. <clears throat> when we work for it, it becomes different. See, God has a plan for your life. God has a ministry for your life. God has a vision for your life. And He's going to put a series of closed doors in front of you for one reason and one reason only, because He wants to make sure that you are firmly established in His will. He wants to make sure that you are firmly established in accomplishing the things that He has for you and that nothing will stop you from getting to the place that He has for you. And there will be people that stand in your way and sometimes they will be fellow Christians. This woman who didn't even belong to the faith that they belonged to came and said, I'm ready to walk away from everything. I'm ready to call you Lord. I'm bowing before you. You will be my Savior. You are the Messiah. I will worship you. And they were saying, get away. Go away. And she said, I will not. I will not stop because I need deeply from the depths of my heart what you and you alone can provide for me. And so I will not be deterred. I will not stop. I don't care what other Christians are going to say. I don't care what people are going to do. I am not going to stop because of a closed door. And you may have an idea for ministry. And you'll bring it forward and, and you'll share it with some of your friends. And they'll say, that might be the dumbest idea I've ever heard. And you'll get discouraged. And the door will close. And you'll begin to think, well, maybe I didn't hear from God. Maybe, maybe God wants me someplace else. And, and you'll go back to the Lord, and the Lord's going to say, what did I tell you? And so then you'll tell a couple other people, and they'll be like, ha, ha, ha. And it may be person after person after person who slams that door in your face. Brothers and sisters, not because they're meaning to frustrate and discourage you. But because sometimes, sometimes we just can't get out of our own way. Sometimes there'll be people in society that'll slam that door in your face and tell you, no, don't go that way. Doors will close for many reasons. But when God has given you a vision, when God has spoken into your heart about what He has for you, do not let anything stop you from the ministry that God has placed before you, from the life that God has placed in front of you. And honestly, 
Satan will be more than happy to open a different door for you. Satan will be more than happy to open a door and make something easy. And we like easy. That's why we pray and say, oh, well, if, if God, you open this door, I'm going to walk through it. God says, no, I'm not going to let it be easy because I want to make sure you want it. I want to make sure that you are not going to be distracted or deterred. I want to make sure that you know you heard from me and you are going to keep moving forward. Because oftentimes the things and the places where God takes us are not easy. Sometimes God is going to develop within us a strength to go someplace in life that is difficult because when we get there it will not be easy. And He wants to make sure that we have the strength within us to stay there. That we have the trust in Him to stay where He has placed us. Because the last thing He needs us to be is like the builder who sat down and began to build a house without calculating the expenses and left it half completed for everyone to mock for everyone to ridicule and so he'll give us a vision and he'll close the door right in front of us to see if we've counted the cost to see if we're determined to do what He has asked us to do and we'll kick that door down and we'll start moving forward and He'll close another door. Not because He's changed His mind, not because He has a different plan for us, because He wants to make sure that we are firmly established. But you know what? We'll come to that door and say, God, why is this happening? Don't you know who I am? I don't deserve this. Because we get this, this idea in our heads that we are more than, than we really are. Which is what makes mercy such a beautiful thing. He wants us to remember the whole time that we don't deserve what we've got. And I know you won't hear that outside of these walls. In society, everyone's going to tell you, oh, you deserve better. You deserve this. You deserve that. I don't deserve anything. I have to earn everything I get. And even once I've earned it, I still don't deserve it. And that was the beauty of this woman. She came to him in great humility. He said, I need mercy because I deserve nothing. And so keep closing doors on me. I don't care. Because I'm firmly established in where I'm going. And I know I don't deserve anything I'm going to get on the other side of that door. But I'm going to keep going. And Jesus began to call her dog. And she could have said, I don't deserve that. I don't need to have him walk away. But she said, that's what I need. Keep it coming because I ain't going anywhere. Because I have a vision that was given to me by the Spirit within me. And I will continue to move through every single door that is placed in front of me closed. My challenge to you is this. Is there a door in your life that the Lord told you to walk through that keeps getting closed? the Lord giving you a vision of who you should be to the ministry you should do? I got so excited. A couple of people came and said, you know what, Pastor? Palms Baptist isn't doing Halloween. Let's do it. <laughs> oh. I'll help you open that door. And I love kicking doors. I don't do it in my house. I only do it spiritually. Lord, you want to close the door after you told me to walk through it, I will kick that door. 
and I will kick that door, and I will kick that door. Because once I've heard from you, Lord, I will not be deterred from what you have for me. What is that door that needs to be kicked down in your life? If you know it, I would love to hear about it. Let's pray. Heavenly Fathers, we come before you. Lord, we can probably all right now think about doors that you have closed in our lives. Doors we've walked away from, thinking you had a different plan, a different vision. Or maybe we thought we just understood you all. Father, I pray that you would reignite us about those doors. Reignite us about the visions that you've given us. And Lord, that we would not come down. Father, that we would be victorious. Because we are firmly established in what you have for us. We ask in Christ's name. Amen.